I feel the glory rise, glory rise. Well, I appreciate all of you just sharing this and being here with us. And it's beautiful. It's what it's all about, just feeling that rest in your heart. Like everything's just all right. You know, that's, that's what we want to hear, regardless of the form of things. And actually, anything that occurs or seems to occur in this world, you can see it with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely anything. It doesn't matter what it is. I, I'll close tonight by telling one of those parables from the life of Lisa. She called me up one day and she was, uh, she went to work in Mount Joy. That's where her business was. She was the CEO of a company that started with the word abundant. And it was based in Mount Joy. And she was, I think, right in nearby town. She lived in Mannheim and was very close to Mount Joy. She was in a, a small uh, Pennsylvania town. And she was just in her glory one day, sitting in her car. And she was in her car and then she just was sitting there and just smiling and happy in her car. And all of a sudden she heard an explosion. It was, it was an explosion and she started, it sounded like one of the buildings or something had exploded somewhere and then it was another one and then another one another one it was a series of successive explosions and she's like really like looking around and she's just really happy but she's looking around to see what's going on with all these successive explosions and then she just turns around and she realizes that she's been rear-ended and she's been in like a, a five or six car collision that that the car rear-ended her and the car behind rear-ended and the car behind rear-ended and the car behind that that's she was so in the glory she didn't realize she just was at the front of of this huge massive pileup of cars one after the next so she hops out of her, she's so in the glory, she hops out of her car and she, the people start to get out of their cars and they come up and the first one that comes up to her and Lisa goes, Lisa goes, it's a miracle. Imagine if this, put yourself in this setting to be in this state of mind where this could be the first three words that come out of your mouth after you've stepped out of a car and you're in the front end of a, of a she goes, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. And the lady's like, <laughs> and Lisa says, it all, it's all our mind, it's all thought. We ask for all of this. This is the next words that come out of her mouth. And the lady goes, she goes, she goes, she goes, you are exactly right. I drive this clunker of a car. My husband only lets me drive this clunker, even though we've got a brand new car. And I was just thinking a block ago, why am I in this clunker? I don't even like this clunker. I don't want to drive this clunker. This is talk. All minds are joined. We aren't kidding. If you can imagine a pot, and the lady goes, you are exactly, this is a miracle. She looked at it and I didn't want to drive that clunker. I was just thinking, my husband, how dare him give me this thing to drive and everything. She said, it's a miracle. So then the next person comes out and they, they go, it's a miracle. And they go, yeah, it is. And they just start laughing. And then another one comes and they start laughing and another one. So meanwhile, you've got like five or six people all on the side of a, of a massive collision and they're all laughing. And then the cop shows up. And the cop walks up to them all and they're all laughing and the cop can't help but break out in the biggest smile like, you people. You know, like, what are you on? Like, this like, a car is all crunched up and these people like by the side of the road just laughing. And you know how they say laughter is contagious. Well, the miracle is contagious because because we're all one mind, really. And if, if you hold the thought and you're really in the miracle, it just has to reflect. The mind is so powerful, it has to reflect back. So that's one of those parables that I tell people a lot because it's so striking. You know, people would say that's it's just amazing. It's, it, it would be amazing for one person to hop out of a car and go, it's a miracle. But for the rest of them all to do it, and the cop, to all fall into this thing and, and, and be aware that it was all just a collection of thoughts and why don't we just rejoice 
in the glory, you know, in the happiness. And so, those are the kind of stories and parables that show you the power of your mind. That it's always a choice, regardless of what seems to be happening. There's always a choice. And you can always see it from that miraculous perspective. And isn't it great that here we are doing the mind training and that we're opening to that frame of mind, that perspective, that glory, you know, to really be able to feel that. And we've all, you know, had glimmers of that. I remember uh, Sundari telling me that when your husband passed away, you just, it was this beautiful process. You stayed with this seemingly dead body and and had all of these wonderful healings and it wasn't a typical scene of a wife grieving over a husband and sending him off to be embalmed and you know this and this. It was a long process of, of healing and really a glorious process that you've told me about in great detail. So that's just another kind of extreme example for most people. They would say, well, that's just bizarre. Some people might call it bizarre, but it's not bizarre at all. That's Miracles are natural. You know, when, when they do not occur, something has gone wrong. You know, that's what we're shifting into, is expecting miracles, expecting the miraculous, always. And when they don't occur, it's like, whoops, realign here, <laughs> get back up. And I'll close tonight with a parable from my friend Axel who at 9-11 when, when the Twin Towers had come down and after a number of days there still was the dust and the stench and the twisted metal and all the powdery you know, stuff all over and everything. He, he and a group of Course in Miracles students were guided to, to walk into right, right into Ground Zero. And, and he told the pair boys they were walking in closer and closer, getting closer and closer blocks in New York City, closer to Ground Zero. This wasn't that long after it had happened. I, I think it was maybe 11, 13 days after. As he got closer and closer, he was just in this miraculous state of mind. And he was so happy and so much in God, just in the glory of God, walking right into Ground Zero. And then he got to a certain point where from the side came this, it was a Japanese man wearing a plaid sport coat. And the Japanese man crossed right in front of him and his head was hung over and he was just he was shaking his head. He said, so, so terrible, so... He was, he seemed to be uh, mirroring the uh, sense of tragedy uh, with his head down and, and shaking and, and kind of his gaze, you know, very despairing and everything. And my friend Axel looked at him and had the most, the tiniest wisp of a thought go through his his happy mind. He was so happy, but he had a wisp of a thought. And the wisp of the thought was, I wonder if my joy could be an affront to this man. I wonder if, if talk about the Course is teaching us true empathy. Stay in the joy. It's, joy is all that there is. God is joy. You are joy. And he, but he had the tiniest wisp of a thought, I wonder if my joy could be an affront to this man. And he said, as soon as I had that thought, he felt the heaviness of the dust in his nostrils, the heat burning on his lips, and the stench, the smell hit him like wham. <laughs> you know, he, he suddenly was back in a human perspective with the tiniest of thoughts. I wonder if my joy could be an affront to this man. And I said, what did you do? And he said, I called on the miracle. I went, God, help me. You know, he was just like, it was just such a contrast experience from what he was in. It was so intense. And so he, he called on the miracle. He just he closed his eyes and he just prayed, please help me, Holy Spirit, help me. From the bottom of his heart, please. And he, he said, I, I just was lifted right back up into the miracle. So then, I said, what happened then? And he said, well, I opened my eyes, and the Japanese man was staring me right in the eyes. It was like his eyes and I, my eyes were right there. We were just looking at each other. And I said, what happened then? And he said, the Japanese man smiled, 
and he spoke almost like in a rhythm, like almost like a rap rhythm in English. I said, what did he say? And he smiled and he said, I can see by the way that you feel that you know that none of this is real. <laughs> Now, when we tell you that perception is not a fact, it's an outward picture of an inward experience, and the miracle is an inward experience, and everything you perceive in the world is a reflection of what you're, you look inside first and then you look out, that's a great parable, great parable for the power of the miracle, because that reflection back was just a beautiful witness of the shift of mind. You know how we say it's all about a shift of mind, a shift of perspective. That's really what the miracle is. It isn't walking on water, it isn't turning water into wine and parting the Red Sea and all these things. You know, those can seem to be very extraordinary things, but really a miracle is simply that realignment with God and then ex accepting the witnesses that come forth. And so really, your whole life on earth is simply for one thing. You are collecting reflections of miracles. <laughs> Just collect as many as you want and as many as you need. And are they convincing? They are. I've gone around the world to 28 countries and I've been collecting lots of them <laughs> over the last 25 <laughs> years. And, and that's what convinces us. You know, we, we need to be convinced. We've, We've been hoodwinked by the ego, you know, we've, we've had, you know, I once was blind but now I see, we've been blind because of this egoic belief system that we've held on to. We've drawn forth these crazy witnesses of, of victimization, separation and everything, and now it's time to turn the tables on the ego and draw forth miraculous witnesses. And I hope that your your visit here in Living Miracles Monastery has been just that. That's what we're all about. That's what we're doing here. That's the focus. And it's practical, you know, we're not just saying all is love, all is God, but it's really, we'll talk about everything that's involved in that shift of perception, because it's that important. So, instead of saying I case it, I would see it. See you tomorrow, and good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> and good night. <laughs>